Live on live today on Paris Live PM, Rubiat Hussain, thank you for being with us. You're from Bangladesh. Your film Under Construction has been doing the rounds of film festivals in Europe and beyond. So thank you once again for being with us on Paris Live PM. Um, your film looks at some serious contemporary issues in Bangladesh, actually, um, at least in urban Dhaka, the capital, through the main character, a woman called Roya. Now, her ambition and determination to be an actress, also a director, and not bow to convention, um, to carry the scenario you weave around this story called uh, Red Oleanders, written by the famous Bengali Nobel Literary Prize winner, Rabindranath Tagore. So what drew you, first of all, to this story as a matrix for your film. Thank you so much uh, for having me here. Um, under construction, when I was writing this story, uh, I had two uh, things in mind. I wanted to tell a story about an urban middle-class Muslim woman trying to find her own self um, in relation to her husband and her mother and under this patriarchal culture. So. Around her, I also wanted to depict my city and the way I understand my city and experience it. And Tagore's Red Oleanders is his last play that was published in 1926. And in the play, he it's an allegorical play. It talks about a setting where human beings have turned into numbers, so they are not defined by their spirits. Everybody has become a number. And I felt that the ready-made garment industry in Bangladesh, where uh, millions of women are employed, um, really reminded me of Tagore's setting, where human beings are have become numbers, they're disconnected from their spirit. They're also working for a king that they cannot see. In the play, the king is hidden behind the net, and these women are working for multinationals that they really have no contact with. So I wanted to put that as the backdrop of my story. And in Tagore's play, there is a woman named Nandini. That's the role that my protagonist plays. But Tagore constructed her as a cultural icon. Uh, I felt that she was not really constructed as a real human being. And I feel that with a lot of literature by uh, male writers where females have to ca carry the cultural burden and their personal life is not part of the story. So I wanted to change that. So I brought her in and set up the story in the way that she would question the play and she would want to reconstruct it. And in doing so, she would bring out her own subjectivity and sexuality. The strongest relationship in the film um, does, in fact, um, take your idea through the scenario. It plunges Roya into a situation that makes her realise her responsibility. That's part of her construction, I guess. Um, her responsibility towards others, as well as to herself, and the consequences also of her actions. Um, it comes out of her dependence on this other very, um, her, the most prominent character, Moina, the young servant girl, and Moina's own sense of emancipation. She says a lot about... Bangladesh today, about Dhaka today, whether it's from the point of view of women or labor? Moina character is something that um, is taken out of my own life. You know, I have grown up in a household where we have always had maids. And even though I tried to help these women, a lot of the times I felt like there was a barrier that I could not cross. You know, there was this very strong class um, boundary that even if I wanted to transgress, I couldn't. So I wanted to bring that into my film through the relationship of these two women. And Moina also presents a paradox because even though she's working as a housemaid, as a domestic servant, she wants to have her own family and independence. So she leaves this home and then she goes, starts her own life in the slum and starts working in the factory where she's supposed to be quote-unquote free, but now she's working in this condition where she could lose her life any day. So what is the price of her freedom? And is she actually able to be free from her socioeconomic uh, situation? So that, that is a paradox that I wanted to bring out in the film. And that's why in Roya's reconstruction of Red Oleanders, Moina becomes the Nandini. You just mentioned the word transgress. Now, there's a love scene 
in your film, not just a love scene, there's a physical lovemaking scene in your film, which we don't usually associate with cinema coming from Asia. Now, did you have to go through various censor hoops to be able to keep that in the film? That scene was not there when I released the film in Bangladesh. The film was released in Bangladesh earlier this year. It ran for five weeks in theatre, and that scene was not part of the cut that I was able to show there. There's no problem here, though, um, in France or in other festivals you've been to uh, around the world? No, there has been. I, I, have, I was able to screen the entire film. I imagine that here in France, where your film's just been screened or was screened recently at the FFAST uh, Festival, the Transgressive Asian Cinema Festival here in Paris, that um, it's, that scene goes relatively unnoticed. People perhaps focus more on the uh, exchanges between the mistress and the servant, the hierarchy, and also some of the social questions that you raise and issues that are going on in Dhaka and in your country. You're absolutely right. Um, here people don't even notice it because, you know, I believe that audiences in different places have different uh, thresholds of what they can accept and what they don't. And here audiences are used to different contents in cinema for a very long time. Uh, my film actually had its French premiere earlier this year in February in Vesoul, in the Asian festival, uh, where I had a great response and a great experience. And also when I when it screened here, um, I feel like audience here are very politically inclined. Um, they like to talk about issues of politics and women's rights. And I always have long discussion with women audiences after the screening. It's ironic in Bangladesh where there's this history of women in positions of political power in the country that, um, as we see in your film, uh, women's freedoms are really curtailed? Well, it it's actually um, a difficult question to answer because it's both at the same time. Because if you look at Bangladeshi women, they're really empowered. They're doing extraordinary job in different fields of politics and you know foreign relations, even in the military, in sports. Um, and the fact that I come from Bangladesh and I'm able to be a filmmaker and make a film and release it there also says a lot about um, the level of freedom women have in Bangladesh. But at the same time, there has been recent political events that has been um, quite frightening, not only for women, but I think in general for the entire society. Well, the uh, women's rights issues are all over the world as well even you know we're talking here in France we have them here too so I imagine all things being relative um, and beyond that imagination in fact does play a very big role in your film and there are points in the film where we're not quite sure whether this is actually happening to your characters or not are they seeing are they seeing this in their minds are they dreaming it of course very clearly when Roya wakes up next to a serpent um, she's that's a, a dream sequence, or is it? No, no, it is a dream sequence. Um, it's basically I tried to. Uh, I wouldn't call it a dream sequence. I would say that it's her subconscious. And in the film, I was really going, trying to go into a woman's internal world, how she really feels in her mind and her body. Um, so I wanted to bring out images that would represent her subconscious, and that's what I tried to do with those sequences. India's present in your films, whether it's through Tagore or the films that Roya and Moina watch together on TV. Um, some of your actors as well, people, Rahul Bose, we could mention, um, Nahit the lover, the real or imaginary lover, um, and also post-production, etc. Um, to what extent are you dependent on the Indian film circuit and what it can provide to be able to make your films today? A lot of Bangladeshi filmmakers actually have to go to India for post-production support uh, because for good color grading support um, for the digital film, that the medium that we use right now, and also for 5.1 Dolby sound mixing, we have to go to India. And Rahul Bose has been a friend of mine. So um, when I was making the film, I approached him and he agreed. And when it comes to Tagore, I never think of him as Indian. Uh, he's a Bengali poet. He He's the writer of our national anthem, so we very much own him. 
Well, thank you very much, Rabiat Hussein, for being with us today. You've put a lot of yourself into this film under construction. We wish you all the very best with it. Thank you so much. Thank you.